did you ever watch Adult Swim in the 2000s? If so, then it was probably very late at night, sometime around 2 a.m. If you weren't watching for Family Guy, Robot Chicken, or The Boondocks, then you probably remember cartoons you've never heard of coming on in between your favorite late night shows. If you were a late night viewer in 2006, then chances are, you may have seen a cartoon about a strong barbarian who gets drunk at a bar, created by Aaron Springer, and directed by none other than Cartoon Network animation legend Gindy Tartakovsky, creator of Dexter's Laboratory, Samurai Jack, Symbiotic Titan, Primal, and most recently, the mega-hit Unicorn Warriors Eternal. Another interesting fact about Korgoth of Barbaria is that it was the first production under Cartoon Network Studios to be co-produced by William Street, the company well known for making shows with Adult Swim like Aqua Teen Hunter Force. Before we jump into the episode, let's talk about the creator of this project, Aaron Springer. Aaron Springer is a cartoon genius. Fresh out of graduating from the California Institute of the Arts, he briefly worked with Spunko before heading over to Nickelodeon. Once he arrived at Nick, Aaron became a writer and storyboard artist for SpongeBob SquarePants. This quickly became a permanent gig for Springer, as he helped write and storyboard the first eight seasons of the show and the 2004 SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Some of the best episodes of the show were written by him. Once Aaron got his foot in the door, he started working on some shows at Cartoon Network as well, including Samurai Jack and The Dream Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Aaron's career was going great, and I'm sure he was honored to help develop and push forward these amazing cartoons. But it seems that he was always working on his own ideas as well for a great new series. In 2004, Aaron created a series for Cartoon Network called Periwinkle Around the World. The show centers around a platypus named Periwinkle, as he explores the world and finds himself in some funny situations. Cartoon Network rejected the show for a full series. However, they asked Springer instead to make five animated shorts of Periwinkle that would be available to watch on cell phones. Aaron agreed to take on the project, along with the help of Gindy Tartakovsky and the voice of Tom Kenny, Springer was able to put together five hilarious animated shorts of Periwinkle. Luckily, Cartoon Network got rid of the cell phone idea and aired four of the shorts as part of a new cartoon block titled Sunday Pants. After the episodes aired a few times, the cartoon was never played again and was quickly forgotten. While writing this video, I stopped writing the script and watched all five Periwinkle shorts. This cartoon is really funny and gag-driven. I like the main character as well. He fits right in with Chowder and Flapjack. People in the comments of the video compare the platypus to Mr. Bean, and I totally agree with that comparison. Other comments praise the shorts as being some of the best animated shorts since the golden age of animation. Although these shorts are very good and will keep you laughing the entire time, I still would have liked to see more of a full story and other characters introduced to better determine if this show deserved the green light for its own series. After doing Periwinkle around the world, Aaron continued to work on Spongebob and started working on the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy for Cartoon Network. During his time on the show, Springer started developing an idea for a more adult-themed cartoon, Korgoth of Barbaria. This cartoon pilot is a parody of Conan the Barbarian that is done in a brilliant way. Unlike Aaron's last idea for a show, Periwinkle, this time, we get a full pilot episode that's runtime is over 22 minutes. The episode starts with some goons trying to get into a bar. Watching this opening scene alone, you know that you're in for a great watch. Everything within the first minute of the pilot is hilarious and well-written. Once the group steps foot in the bar, they get a good look at the madness surrounding everything and the strange feeling that something is about to go down. Everyone begins talking, but the camaraderie is soon interrupted by a sound of water flowing. 
They look over and see a big barbarian taking a leak in the bar. Immediately after, we get a narrated intro for Korgoth. That's really cool. One of the drunts sheepishly walks over to Korgoth and tells him that they were sent there to find him and bring them to their leader. After shrugging off the drunt, another person from the group walks over to handle the situation. After spilling Korgoth's beer, Korgoth gets enraged and slams down the leader of the group onto the bar. His men do start to attack, but are easily dismantled by the buff barbarian. After Korgoth sees that the leader has a bag of gold for him, he decides to go see the real leader of the group. This guy is really weird, and he strangely gives Korgoth a hug. While Korgoth helps himself to a feast, the leader asks him to go get a treasure because a wizard died and left behind a gold goblin. Korgoth is walking away saying he doesn't want to do this when the greasy leader tells Korgoth that he just put a stomach parasite in him with the food he just ate. And if he completes the mission, he will give him the elixir to cure it. After slaying some beasts and having a good time with the girl he saved, Korgoth and the Drunts face a new enemy, a huge bird. He decides to ride the bird to the castle and finds his way in. While everyone is ransacking the place, the wizard that's supposed to be dead walks in with suitcases and tells them that he was on vacation. He then starts mind controlling the group and puts them under a trance. The wizard finds Korgoth with the golden goblin and tries to stop him. He uses some kind of magic bubble gum that transforms into a monster. On a side note, it kind of reminds me of the blob that ate everything from Goosebumps. The monster and Korgoth engage in a fierce battle that is fairly even. After a good fight, Korgoth finally defeats the monster and grabs the golden goblin. The wizard has another trick up his sleeve and shoots laser beams from his eyes at Korgoth. He doesn't get back the gold goblin, but the wizard did manage to get away. With the mission complete, Korgoth brings the gold goblin back to the drunk leader, who then drops the news on Korgoth that the elixir will take a few seasons to work properly. After giving Korgoth a huge supply of elixir, he sneakily takes the goblin and goes through a secret door down to his lair. This pilot episode was magic and should have been the next big show on Adult Swim. In fact, it almost was. Korgoth of Barbaria first aired on June 3rd of 2006. Two weeks later, Adult Swim said in a bumper that the show has been picked up for a full series, noting that the pilot brought in high ratings and was a critical success. At Comic-Con that year, it was announced that the show would begin to air regularly in the spring of 2007. Fans waited eagerly for a new episode and it never made it to the screen. What they did see was an Adult Swim bumper saying the show didn't move forward because of high production costs. On AdultSwim.com, they said of the show, quote, You couldn't handle more than one anyway. It's unknown if Aaron wrote this or said this to Adult Swim. As much as I love and appreciate Adult Swim, this is, and always has been, their biggest downfall. They like to play, but don't really like to pay. Most successful shows on the block are very low budget, like Space Ghost Coast to Coast, Sea Lab 2021, and Aqua Teen. It was never officially stated, but I think this is the same reason that the Welcome to Eltingville pilot was rejected. It just costs too much. Now, after watching the Korgoth pilot, yes, it does look like an expensive show to animate and produce, but I really think that this show deserved at least one 13 episode season. When you get a piece of TV gold like this, that is something you take a chance on. I truly believe this show could have been something amazing for Adult Swim, but just like with the Eltingville pilot, Adult Swim dropped the ball with this one. 
Korgoth of Barbaria aired in 2008 on Halloween night alongside other obscure pilots like Welcome to Eltingville. Every few years, Adult Swim will randomly air the pilot episode because they know that fans absolutely love it. Three years later in 2009, Aaron was given another chance at making his own TV show for Cartoon Network. This time, it was for the program called the Cartoon Institute. This project was for animated shorts to be made without any network execs interfering during production. Ran by Craig McCracken and Rob Renzetti, the program sounded like a perfect fit for the chaotic ideas of Aaron Springer. Originally, the Cartoon Institute had 39 shorts in development. Out of the 39 cartoons, only 14 of them were finished. Luckily, Aaron's cartoon pilot was complete. Baloo Baloob's Fun Park. This cartoon revolves around two teenagers, Jeff and Andy, who work at the fun park, and an extraterrestrial being named Baloo Baloob. After a failed performance, the teens overhear the boss telling Baloo Baloob that if he doesn't make some money for the park, then it will be closed down Monday. Also, this episode is narrated by someone. It's very similar to that Spongebob episode where a narrator talks to you the whole time. The plot also feels like it's straight out of an episode of Spongebob Squarepants. After overhearing the boss, Andy and Jeff go to Baloo Baloo's trailer to help him out. While peeping in the trailer, they notice that he is not human, and his hamburger head is real. The trio travel around trying to find a million dollar idea, and end up at a shady magic shop. The bunny magician pulls out a box made of arms that blows bubbles, and they decide to take it. The next show begins, and Baloo Baloo accidentally drops mustard from his hamburger head into the magic box. This ruins everything and covers the crowd with mustard. Everyone leaves outraged. At the last minute, Jeff asks Andy for a quarter. Andy painfully gives him his last dollar and Jeff inserts it into the magic box. The machine spits out a lot of dollars and the boss is now happy. Baloo Baloo does some kind of trick where he throws a napkin over the box and it turns into a pigeon, then flies away. Is Aaron Springer a genius? Aaron Springer is a cartoon genius. Ah. Yes. Did Aaron Springer give us one of the best pilots of all time with Korgoth of Barbaria? Yes. Was Baloo Baloo's Fun Park a good pilot episode that deserved the green light? I would have to say no to that one. It's totally understandable why they passed on this pilot. This pilot was simply not a good idea. Before writing this video, I had never watched this episode, so I was excited to jump into it. After pressing play, I was waiting for that Aaron Springer magic, and it just never arrived. The two teenagers were fine and could have been cool characters in a cartoon. However, the main character, Baloo Baloo, was so uninteresting to me and just never would have worked as the main character in a cartoon. After yet another failed project in the books, Springer continued to work on SpongeBob SquarePants until season eight. In 2012, he started working on some shows for Disney, Gravity Falls, Mickey Mouse, and Wonder Over Yonder. While at Disney, Aaron got another opportunity to bring one of his show ideas to life. In 2014, Billy Dilly's Super Duper Subterranean Summer was announced to be a pilot for Disney XD. After two years of silent development, it was confirmed that Disney gave Aaron the green light for a full series. Billy Dilly's Super Duper Subterranean Summer premiered in June of 2017. This show revolves around Billy Dilly, a kid in seventh grade who really likes science. Also, his two lab partners, Marsha and Zeke. And don't forget Billy's pet rat, Anaximander. During the show, Billy and his friends, while on summer vacation, take a ride in Billy's science fair project called the Cheeserator. This goes wrong, and they end up in Subterranea Tania, a bizarre and unusual world located in the Earth's core. 
I really like these character designs and their personalities work very well together. Zeke is voiced by Tom Kenny and Billy is voiced by Aaron Springer himself. I actually really enjoy this pilot. The writing is top tier and the never ending jokes are on point. It has the same outlandish scenes and sometimes gross humor that you can expect from Springer. The show aired a new episode every day for 13 days and ended immediately after this, which I find very strange, but have definitely heard of this happening before. We're going to give you a show and spend over a year developing a season, just to air all episodes in a two week span and forget about it. It's like they're rushing it out the door. It's probably for stupid reasons like using it as a tax write off, but I truly don't know. Luckily, all episodes of Billy Dilly's Super Duper Subterranean Summer have been uploaded to Disney+. Plus. The show produced 13 episodes with 25 segments in total. They are also available to purchase on iTunes and Google Play. I'm glad Aaron finally got his own show. His persistence, talent, and hard work finally paid off. But he wasn't finished pitching ideas just yet. A few years after Billy Dilly came and went, it was rumored that Aaron was pitching a new show titled Snail Riders of Zongdar to Warner Brothers Animation. It was confirmed by writer and animator Peter Braugart that this was in fact true, but the project was rejected shortly after the initial pitch. In 2020, Aaron Springer was the head of story for the SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run. In the following years, he was a storyboard artist for the film Trick or Treat Scooby-Doo and is currently storyboarding the Spongebob movie Search for Squarepants, which is set to be released in 2025. I'm glad to see that Aaron is still doing what he loves and his career is going strong. He has had a very interesting career. I've been developing a cartoon pilot myself for a couple of years now and when I research pilots, I usually come across a story about Aaron. So I felt that his career and history of making pilots is well deserved to be documented in a video. Aaron, if you ever watch this video, please leave a comment. I would also love to interview you one day about everything you've done in the industry and your projects. Maybe he is done pitching for now. I got a feeling that Aaron is writing a pitch right now to go and pitch it to some network somewhere. <laughs> Hopefully he does get another show. I really do hope to see an Aaron Springer show soon. Aaron Springer is a cartoon genius. If you want to see my video about the Eltingville pilot, click here. If you want me to do a video about the Cartoon Institute, let me know in the comments. Have a great day, everyone, and until next time, stay up late productions. Thank you.